could Pokemon ever just do away with the regular holographic? And what would happen if they printed a retro TCG set and got rid of all of the full art cards? Those are questions from you guys plus more in today's episode of the Q&A. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel, TCG Funhouse, where we talk all things Pokemon TCG. I am Travis with TCG Funhouse here with another episode of Pokemon TCG Q&A, where I invite my buddy, my podcast partner up here. I believe his name is ASX. Say what's up, my guy. How's it going, everybody? I'm super excited. Like I say every week, I really love doing these videos, and uh, we got some good questions from you guys it, constantly, every single week, but I'm, I'm excited about these ones this week for sure. Yeah, that, that dude, absolutely amazing. Again, yeah. we're going to ask you for this episode as well. If you have any questions that you want us to answer about the Pokemon TCG, leave them in the comment section here in this video, and we will get around to them. Now, we always get more questions questions than what we can answer um so don't be bummed if we don't select your uh question it means it might be on a different later episode um it just it just it is what it is if we had more time i mean i would love to do a three hour q a but i don't think the youtube algorithm would enjoy that very much um but if you guys have any questions for us please leave them down there you can also dm us on instagram twitter patreon any other place that you have access to us just send them over there and we will answer them for you maybe even over on asx's channel which go show him some love link is in the description below right they should go show you some love right asx yeah yeah show me some love i got some cool stuff happening on my channel um you guys some, some box breaks coming up uh I'll even have um, some stuff about real Breaking Nate's million uh, subscriber party. I'm Ooh. actually going to. So a little hint, hint. I actually haven't disclosed that with anybody yet. So now you know. um, I'm excited uh, and going to have some, um, you know, some uh, some vlog style videos on that as well. That'll be exciting. That will be fun. It's very close to you over there. Not so close to me down yeah. here. So he definitely lives in Indiana. You give me crap oh. about living in well, Indiana. Well, so do you. You guys, there. you're in Indiana too. In so, <laughs> you freaking Hoosiers, man. I'll tell you what. Um, Midwesterners. I guess you're still a Midwesterner. You, you can you can lump me into that bubble. Out that All right, you're li a line eye. <laughs> okay. So, uh, first question here is coming from YouTube comment section last video from David Gamut, aka the Invisible Wizard. The wizard. The Wizard. He wants to know what do you think the Pokemon Company has planned for hollows and reverse hollows going forward in the pokemon tcg asx what do you think the floor is yours my friend yeah i mean they gotta know right pokemon company has to know like hollows and reverse hollows are just nothing that's popular anymore it's not really anything that anybody's looking for in these packs you know so it's it's tough to say honestly because i mean Hollows have been with us from the start, and those have never gone anywhere, right? We're 26 years into this thing now, and we've seen hollows in every single set. So as much as I want to say they're going to go away, I don't think regular hollows are going to go away. I think we're always going to really see regular hollows, um, you know, not only in packs, but we'll see them in like, you know, as promo cards and stuff like we see them as now. Um, so regular hollows, I think, are here to stay. We're going to see a new hollow pattern or something like that, of course. Uh, I hope they don't do like vertical or horizontal lines. Um, I was much bigger fan of like the sun and moon era hollow myself. Um, but yeah, I think they're here to stay as for the reverse hollows though. That could be a different story. I feel like that's something get that's like a, a rarity of card. <laughs> that's a lot easier for them to get rid of. Um, you know, we always get a question that like we kind of touch on like in our podcast episode. I know, right? Uh, it's always funny. earlier on. Um, so definitely go listen to that. But um, yeah, I think, you know, we're we're starting to see where they're toying with. Uh, and I, I don't want to give up everything that we talked about in our podcast. <laughs> great episode. Trigger um, gallery. I, th I think they're toying with uh, some different options, right? We're seeing the trainer gallery now. That's being put into the reverse slot. Uh, I mean, we saw amazing rares kind of earlier on. That may have been like kind of the birth of them really kind of throwing something else in there for this era. Um but yeah, I really see them kind of testing it out for us. And, you know, the way that trainer gallery cards are going and just how much more popular those cards are, 
by leaps and bounds over reverse hollows. I think that could be something that they could look at getting rid of and, um, you know, maybe not always having a trainer gallery in that slot, but, you know, there being a chance for the trainer gallery, right? I know when I pull mm-hmm. a trainer gallery card, I feel way better about pulling that than whatever hollow reverse hollow is going to be in there. Honestly, even if it's like a reverse hollow Charizard from like vivid voltage, like, yeah, it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But when I see a trainer yeah. gallery card, it's like, oh, okay, cool. This is Pretty awesome. Sweet. I got a trainer. I got a Pokemon. It's shiny. It's pretty much a full art. Awesome. I'm game for that. So I think yeah. that's kind of the route that they're going, uh, kind of testing the waters and seeing if they can just kind of ditch those. I, regu- I, I don't really think I don't think the hollows are ever going to go anywhere simply yeah. because that's where their bread and butter was in 1999. Um, unfortunately, pulling a hollow no longer feels nostalgic. Um, it wasn't bad though. I will say when I first got back into the Pokemon TCG in like 2000, uh, probably like late 2018 ish, um, yeah. mid 2018, I actually was still pretty hype about hollows. You know, I was buying singles. I was buying some black and white single hollows, some X and Y single yeah. hollows of my favorite Pokemon. I was like, this is pretty cool. You know, put them on binder and stuff like that. Um, and they have fallen even farther from those days. You know, the, oh, you, yeah. you know, pulling a hollow in black and white era was still pretty cool. You know, yeah. it was like, all right, you know, that's when we first started to get like that's the ultra rares and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. I think emerging powers had like the full arts of the, of, you know, before we really started to get like these EXs and all these types of things. Right. Um, and nowadays it's just the feeling of pulling a hollow is just gone. Like, yeah. but I still don't think they're going to get rid of it anywhere because it is, it's just, it's their thing. You know, pulling a holographic yeah. is their thing. Now, reverse hollows, on the other hand, I am completely over them. If you've been following my channel here on TCG Funhouse, you know I absolutely loathe reverse hollows, and there's no point in them except yeah. to make collecting a master set extraordinarily hard. So, reverse yeah. hollows, I don't think are any, they're, they're not needed any longer. They've played their part, right? Yeah. So, it's no longer like a value add. Well, no, and, 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 and that, there really was no value at all for me, and this is what I think it was. I think they came up with these reverse hollows. During an era where Pokemon TCG was down, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted to make it harder for people, for collectors, for hardcore Pokemon collectors to complete a master set, which means they had to buy more packs to complete their master set, which was their goal. They needed to sell packs, sell packs, sell packs. Obviously, they still need to sell packs, but they're selling a lot more packs than they were back in 2017, 2015, that era, you know? So... I think they actually should go the other way and make it easier for people to collect master sets and just yeah. make those big hits harder to pull, like the Umbreon VMAX alternate art. If you're making yeah. those alternate art significantly harder to pull, then you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I need to buy this many packs to complete my, I'm missing this reverse hollow, this reverse rare, this reverse uncommon. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore. You know, right? And the sets are bigger anyway. Like back then, the sets were like 100, 110, 115 <laughs> yeah. cards. Now they're like 189. Yeah, right. they're, they're like 189 cards. So by adding 60 more cards already, you're picking up the slack of those reverse hollows. And then if you're adding trainer gallery to that as well to every single set, if they're going to yeah. continue trainer gallery, there's your other 30 cards. There's your 90 reverse hollows in every set that you've now replaced by adding more common and uncommon cards, maybe more regular rare cards, and then also yeah. adding that trainer gallery. So people still need to buy the same amount of packs to complete it anyway. And reverse hollows, just nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares about them at all. They're dunskies. They're broke. Nobody wants them. Um, but the hollows aren't going anywhere. I would love for, yeah. you know, I don't want them to just kind of like remove the re- re- reverse hollow spot and give us one less card per pack. I would actually right. like to see them potentially put two rares in one pack. Like that would be cool. Two rare slots. There are there's there are some TCGs out there that have two or even three rare slots sometimes um, yeah. in the sets. So it would be really nice to see that sort of a thing. Um, and like in terms of like the hollows and promos, I would like to see the holographic promos just get replaced with trainer gallery. Like the three pack blisters, instead of getting, you know, like the Glaceon and Leafeon hollows that we got for Brilliant Stars, um, put a trainer gallery in there. Like they're they're not crazy expensive as is, but like the hollow promos are usually worth a little bit more than like the regular hollow that might be in that set as well if it's the same card. Um, and some of those promos go for good money. The the Pikachu 
that uh, that was like eaten the, at the picnic table um, with Mimikyu, I think. Awesome card. Sylveon might be in it. There's one other. I don't remember who's in it. Um, but that card, that card holds like twenty dollar value right now, and it was a check lane blister promo, Black Star promo. So do those types of artworks inside of the promo cards, so that way you can get rid of that multiple hollow pattern type of a deal. Um, I think would be really cool. And same thing, they've already kind of replaced the uh, theme decks that used to have like a special hollow card. They kind of put V cards in those now, the V battle decks. Uh, I like that they did that, so that removes another form of the hollow. So they're making it easier to understand, right? So make a make a new hollow pattern for Generation Nine, and just leave it at that. Replace all the other hollow promos with Trainer Gallery. Get rid of reverse hollow slots, but they won't do any of that. It's just going to be status quo. They're going to keep the reverse hollows. Going to keep the hollows the way they are. That's my thoughts on that. I wish I gave you my thoughts, my opinions, what I want. It's not what I think they're going to do. So yeah, that was that was talking fast and just getting to my point because i was really long-winded there for a second um but let us know in the comment section what you guys think what what do you think you would like them to do with the hollow reverse hollow section and what do you think they will do yeah next question very similar very similar question but on the opposite end of the spectrum uh brandon turnbow um also from youtube comment section last week See, says maybe this might be a little too retro, but what if the Pokemon TCG was to release a retro style set where they had no full arts, no ultra rare type cards, no rainbows, no nothing. Mm-hmm. All they had was hollows, commons, uncommons, hollows, maybe reverses in there too, right? But like, how do you think a retro style set would go in today's yeah. modern era? Um, to be flat out honest with you, I don't think, unfortunately, I don't <laughs> think that would do well. I mean, we were at the point, um, you know, we, a couple episodes ago on the gym leaders, we talked about being in a new era, right? Yep. And, um, we, we really are completely in a new era. Um, I think if you were to take out literally all the driving factors for why people are buying packs right now they ain't going to buy that set. Um, you know, even if there was, I mean, a set like that would have to have like a Charizard in it, uh, for people to buy it. But even at that, I mean, I just don't, I just don't see, unfortunately people getting excited about hollows, like only hollows being the only thing. Um, you know, maybe people that are, you know, older, like, you know, kind of in our age range that opened up packs had experience opening up kind of like that vintage and had that feel might feel a little bit nostalgic, but just knowing that I could then, you know, go and buy a brilliant stars pack an astral radiance pack, uh, evolving skies pack and, you know, potentially pull an art alt art or a trainer gallery and, you know, probably have a, a little bit of a better chance pulling something like that. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm unfortunately not spending my money on a set like that. It sounds so, cool, though. I will give you that. I'll give you. I'll give you my thoughts here. I think you're dead wrong. I think you are okay. dead wrong, sir. That doesn't happen um, very often. No. So shut your pie hole. <laughs> and right, this let's, is let's this. Hear it. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay. Let's, let's hear it. So this is what we're gonna do. Okay. Yeah. I think you're wrong because the okay. only thing that matters, the only thing that matters, is rarity. And just okay. because you changed the style of the card, doesn't mean that you're gonna change the rarity of the card. Okay, so sure. just because you went from giving an alternate art, let's go with the alternate art Charizard, right? So in, in the example that Brandon thinks about here, and he actually wrote me on Instagram and went a little bit further in detail about this question. He actually, he even like Photoshopped this himself, Blackwire TCG on Instagram. Go check it out. I believe it's still up there. It's a, he took the Charizard V alternate art and he gave it a border. He gave it like a black border, and it, it, it looked fairly cool, right? It looked really good. But the artwork was the same. It was just back within the border of the frame like it was in like base set and Team Rocket and stuff like that. And the main reason why I think it would still work is for two reasons. One, you still make the chase cards extraordinarily rare. You still, you know, you give us Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur. You make them very, very rare. You give us a secret rare um, Pikachu, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't have like the old school gold borders like we had. Uh, I think it was Heart Gold, Soul Silver era. I had some secret rares with gold borders in them. 
Um, you can still do those sorts of things without giving us these big extended artworks. But the key here, there's two keys here. The first key is you need to make those chase cards extraordinarily rare. You still need to make them one in every 2,000 packs like that Umbreon. Make that Charizard very, very rare. I mean, celebrations and evolutions had proven that people still want these base set style looking cards, right? So that's my first thing. You keep them rare. You, you, and the second thing is you have to give the nostalgic vibe. You have to make them look as if they were still from 1999, 2000. If you can make that happen, if you can give the nostalgic feel and then still give those extreme rarity types of cards, the set would be extraordinarily successful. It would be very, very successful. Yes, the 13 year olds to 18 year olds who've not opened. Uh, who doesn't have that nostalgic feel with Kanto and the 151, they may not be interested in this set. But who has the yeah. money? Who has the money? People in That's their true. in their low 30s, in their high 20s, that opened up Pokemon cards in 1999-2000 now have grown-ass man money, grown-ass woman money, and they are going to spend it on a nostalgic-feeling set that had only hollows in it. Do I think it's something that you could continue? Absolutely not. But I think you could do a subset easily. The first, you know, first subset of 2023, give us a nostalgic feeling, hollows only set. And I guarantee you, as long as the price values on the singles were there, it would do extraordinarily well. And then you could even put, like he was saying, you can put these fantastic artworks in the little box. They just go in the little box and they still give you that nostalgic Pokemon fan. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about it like that. That's a good point, though. Yeah, you take, you know, take take that Phalanx Trainer Gallery card and put it inside of the little box, you know, and just see, make yeah. it happen. It would it would still work out very well, in my opinion. I think it'd be a great set, great great set. It would be an interesting one. I, I would actually, I would like to see if, if that like really came true, like how that how that would all play out. That would be an interesting one for sure. See, I just want to say. This is why we always agree so much, because I am so damn convincing when I talk to ASX. He is forced to agree All with me. All the time. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a attorney. I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I'm a liar. But if you speak with enough conviction, people buy your shit. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> um, okay, so really cool question here. If you guys were part of our last Q&A, um, we said, hey, ask this question about food. That's exactly what this guy did over here. Uh, Squirrel Bait 27 <laughs> um, over on uh, the YouTube comment section as well. He says, so here is the question. Uh, first of all, I want to mention what he does with his friends. And I absolutely love this. Okay. So here, yeah. here's what he wrote. My friends and I often do big pack breaks together where we gather up a ton of booster packs, hang out at the dining room table, have some beers, rip some packs, and eat some food. Nice. Hell to the yes. That is awesome, dude. That is awesome. That is awesome. I wish I had more friends around me that opened up Pokemon cards because I would totally be down for just a pack opening sesh where we all just hang out and shoot the shit and open up Pokemon cards. Phenomenal. That would be so Phenomenal. awesome. Phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. You got a good group of friends out there. So, you got a good group. <laughs> here's, here's his actual question, though. Um, if you had to come up with the perfect food item and or drink for the pack opening for you and your friends, what would you choose? That's a tough question right there. My gosh. Like, <laughs> do I have, like, the next few hours to think about I know, this? right? Like, man. Right? I didn't think this was going to be that heavy of a question. It's so deep. So I'll, I'll oh. go. I'll, I'll, I'll throw a little, a couple of tidbits in there for me while you think about it, All okay? Right. So yeah, yeah. the first thing is it cannot be extraordinarily messy food. So things like nachos are off the board. You know, not as much as I love nachos, opening nachos during a, a booster pack opening, probably not the best idea. Uh, although a little bit of sour cream on a Charizard alternate art may not be a bad thing. Not sure it's the route you want to go. Um, and you can go the same route with uh, tacos. You know, anything that's really dirty, you really can't do. You know what I mean? So yeah, in right. like in terms of like drinks and stuff, I, I don't really drink alcohol. You know, I'm not a, a a beer drinker. I'm not anything like that. So um for me it's just maybe some crazy soda concoctions, maybe some milkshakes. Milkshakes would be fire. Sign me up for yeah. uh, you know, bring out the ninja, some awesome milkshakes, cause you know, you can you got straws, you don't need to touch it, you know, a, a 
a go. milkshake bar. That's where I'm going. I'm going. I'm going milkshake bar where you can just crush like three milkshakes in one sitting. You know, I'm gonna do cookies and cream first, go. and then I'm gonna do a nice little chocolate banana strawberry action milkshake. Uh, like I, I think that's the perfect pack opening drink food right there. And then you know maybe that canned cheese that you can just spray into your mouth and not get on your fingers. The cheese whip. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So oh, now it's man. your turn, man. Now you gotta let us know. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, getting together with the boys, what kind of, you know, what kind of, what are we going to order? What are we going to get over at the house? And, um, you know, this, I, this isn't something that's everywhere. This is a big Midwest thing, big Chicago thing. Um, but I would go, and this might sound messy, but you can eat it with a fork. Uh, Chicago deep dish. I'm going with a deep dish pizza. You can't, um, deep dish, I, that's not even pizza. That's a, that's, it it's not pizza. pizza, it's cake. Done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call it a pie. No, that's why they call it no, a pie. No, it's it's no, it's not a pizza, bro. Deep dish is oh, not pizza. Man. You're not from the Midwest. No, absolutely like not, dude. Dish. No, New York style you, you, all you, day, bro. Oh, New York style. Here. Get that out of here. Fold it. Chicago style. Deep the thin, dish. the all thin, day, flappy crust. <laughs> you take your. Oh. I went to Chicago one time and I ordered I ordered the deep dish and I was not satisfied. I was like, "What is this crap?" Yeah, you probably ordered it from the wrong place, man. You probably I don't remember the name of it. I think it was a chain. I do think somebody somebody uh, I talked to said that I ordered it from the wrong place too. Even though it's like all over Chicago, it's a popular train in Chicago train chain. Yeah. Um, but they were like, "No, you got to get it from this place." I'm like, "Bro, like it was the first place that pulled up on Google." Okay, so right. Uh, but yeah, I, I love myself some deep dish. Uh, so yeah, I would go like deep dish. Uh, and, uh, hold like, on, hold on. Stuff. We got to go back a second here. Did you just say you can eat it with okay, a fork? Right. You can, shove yeah. that up your, you know what? No, you I don't eat do. pizza with a. You eat do, pizza with a purpose, fork. I ain't oh my god! I ain't spaghetti or uh, pizza sauce. We can't. With my Charizard. I'm sorry. I'm eating this thing with the fork. I didn't know that it's this broke. was going to be the Q and A that broke us. I didn't know that this was going to be the question that broke you, us as a team. You broke us up. This There's is no more gym you're no not more only Q&As. not only do you prefer deep dish cake, but you eat it with a fork, bro. My deep dish cake does. Something. You eat it with a fork. I, technically, I think all cake would be deep when dish. When I'm pulling Charizards, yeah, I'm keeping my greasy no. fingers off my. I don't know. Off my Charizards, it's, no, <laughs> bro. Are you going to eat your milkshake I with don't... a spoon too, or like a like a spork? Yeah, maybe I Are you eat your milkshake maybe with a it's spork. Thick as Wendy's. Are you spork? Maybe it's a thick Wendy's frosty. Oh, so all right. So do you put your fries in your Wendy's frosty? Get out of here! Bro. Oh, what are you, you talking about? You have to do that. Oh my! You got to dip your We're fries done. in the frosty, it is bro. Done. We're, we, Dude, we're no longer co hosts. Vanilla Frosties don't exist. They have vanilla milkshakes oh. and then they have Frosties. Frosties are only come in chocolate, okay? Vanilla yeah. is not a Frosty. You got to get chocolate and you got to dip your freaking French fries in it because it is the greatest thing in history. You got to dip your fries in yeah, your yeah. Frosty. I'll oh. even challenge you this oh, okay. dip your chicken nuggets in your Frosty. I'm no. telling you, bro. Just do it That's once. Chocolate chicken nugget. I ain't doing that. <laughs> it is that. better than deep dish cake with a fork, bro. Oh, gosh. No. Oh, pepperoni <laughs> cake. Deep dish pepperoni cake. Oh, my God. I eat my pepperoni cake all day over dipping my nugs <laughs> inside of my frosting. <laughs> <laughs> what do you dip your nugs in? Uh, ranch. Okay. I'll at least give you that. Some, some I'll, I'll at least give you that. I'll give you ranch and buffalo sauce. If you were going right. to give me the good old honey mustard, I was just going to cut you off and finish this episode by myself. That, that's Honey mustard is disgusting. Just end call. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Let's get to the question. All right. One last question uh, here. What, one last question here. And let's just make this a, a, a quick shooter, okay? A quick shooter question. All right. Um, OBKid123... <laughs> Dash YouTube Dash YT says, "I have a question for you. Since Pokemon has done collabs with other companies in the past, uh, outside of Nintendo, um, what would you like to see Pokemon? Who would you like to see Pokemon do a collaboration with? They specifically mentioned MetaZoo. Do you think MetaZoo and Pokemon would be a good collaboration? My answer is no. Um, I'm not a big fan of MetaZoo. Uh, it's it's fine. I don't like the artwork. It's not my favorite TCG in the world. It is what it is. So my answer to that specific question is no. But I'm going to elaborate that a little bit more and just going to ask, who would you like to see Pokemon do a collaboration with? That's 
without too much detail because we're running out of time. <laughs> we are running low on time. Um, oh no, they yeah they do a lot of, a lot of stuff outside of just like the TCG and the video games and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know I, they kind of already are doing this. I it's kind of a cheap answer, but I would say I would love to them to get into more like clothing. Uh, more okay. like adult style clothing, maybe. I like that. Um, you know, because I, I would love, you know, to wear a shirt that doesn't feel like a kid's shirt. Like I got it at the kid's section, you know. Some of the Sometimes they are like very that. childish, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's just like. Dude, perfect I really example. I don't stuff. mean to cut you off, but I just bought yeah, no. that bomb ass Rayquaza hat on PokemonCenter.com. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh, and I, cool. I wear it out, and you can't even tell that it's like a Pokemon hat. Like it legit looks like a, yeah. like a DC hat, you know. It's flat bill yeah. it's it black on black like it looks great yeah so like i said you can find some of that stuff already on pokemon center and i saw that hat that hat actually look, does look really cool um but yeah if they could get into a little bit more of that kind of get a little bit more on the adult side again which they are i mean they're even making like housing like stuff or, like decor for your house that's kind of you know more subtle pokemon i love that they're doing that because i would love to be able to incorporate pokemon more into my everyday life yeah um so yeah that, that'd be my short and quick answer clothing and, and decor i would I like i would like to um uh, i would like to see them do like let's go tcg here i would like to yeah. see them do kind of like what magic is doing right now and collabing with big franchises um, yeah, that would in be printing kind of what cool. they call like in magic, they call it a secret layer, like a secret layer drop. Um, I would like to see that where they pair Pokemon. If you followed me on Instagram and my TikTok, I've been posting these types of videos before where they pair a Pokemon with, let's say, Marvel Avengers or DC superheroes yeah. or things like that, you know. So yeah, you get a tag yeah. team card, you know, you get the you get the uh, Neuvern and Batman, you know, the the Joker and Mr. Mime, you know, like you get those kinds of collaborations on a card, like a tag team card or maybe even like like yeah. a trainer, right? Like a trainer gallery or even like a gym heroes, gym challenge sort of a thing, you know, be like Superman's Arceus, yeah. you know, like it would be really that cool. That would be cool. Iron Man's <laughs> Sizar, that would be really you know, cool. like it, it would be dope. It would be really, really cool. And you just you almost make it like one world like this is the Marvel Universe with Pokemon in it. And since we know the multiverse is a thing and Marvel has all these different multiverses, why not have a universe where Pokemon exist? You can do it. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> it would be really that would cool. Be pretty It'd cool. be really cool. I'd love to see yeah. that. What would you guys like to see? Who do you guys want to see Pokemon do a collaboration with? It could be anything as long as it's not pepperoni cake. But... Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you're new to the channel, it's a pie. drop a it's sub. A pie for a reason. <laughs> it's a pie when it's not super thick. Um, oh, gosh. I love my pies thick. I don't know what, what kind of pies are you eating over there. <laughs> Any skinny pies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, if you guys are new to the channel, guys, drop a sub. Smash that like button. It really, really helps out. We post Pokemon-related content three times per week here on YouTube. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we drop shorts every single day. ASX, what you got going on over there? Yeah, I got my very first box break actually coming up tomorrow. Um, I hope that I don't have packs available, but I might still have packs available today when you guys see this. So, if you are interested, I got Brilliant Stars, Astral Radiance, and VMAX Climax all priced out very, very fairly. Um, so if you're interested in buying into my break, hit me up. ASX.TCG. ASX I almost didn't know my G, uh, my Who Gmail account. What are you? ASX.TCG at gmail.com. Or uh, you can uh, hit me up on Instagram if you're interested. ASX but, uh, underscore this shitty pizza. That's how you find them. Over ah, on Instagram. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, guys. And you, you guys know here at TG Funhouse, we're live every single Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, coming out with us tonight. Revolving door booster box break, pack break, 15 plus packs. Come hang out with us or just come hang and bang and chat, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. And remember, if you want your question answered by here, by here, by us here, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I will see you guys there next week.